What's up mobile devs, I hope you're doing well. In this tutorial, we are going to build from scratch this amazing pager demo animation. So this is a very common pattern that can be applied in a lot of different use cases, such as uh, building onboardings, for instance. So this animation seems obvious and simple, but the truth is that there are a lot of different concepts that can be achieved and learned while building it. So what are we going to use? Of course, we are going to use Reanimated, which is going to be a perfect fit for this specific UI. And last but not least, if you're really curious about React Native Animations and want to learn more, don't forget to check out my online course at reanimate.dev. So this course is designed to guide you from the basics of React Native Animations to advanced techniques. And uh, let's say the best way to achieve that, in my opinion, is to always recreate something from scratch. Because of that, my tutorials are going to feel just a bit slow, but hopefully they are also going to be very helpful. So this course is uh, definitely built on top of animations and uh, we are going to explore how reanimated works, how to unlock the full potential of gesture handler and how to build stunning visual effects with React Native Skia. So no worries at all, because if you want to support me, subscribing to my YouTube channel is definitely more than enough. And that said, let's finally get our hands dirty and let's finally move on to the code part. So here, as you can see, we have our lovely Expo boilerplate and in this project, uh, I'm just using Reanimated. So the one additional thing that uh, I did was just to add this uh, active color. Basically, this one is going to be the active color of our dots container. And that's basically it. So the first thing that I want to do in this tutorial is to focus on building the initial school view. So here, by looking at the animation that we want to build, you can see that uh, behind these dots, uh, there is definitely a scroll view. So the first thing that uh, I want to do is just to create this uh, scroll view. And let's start to do that. So first of all, let's get rid of this text. Let's update the background color. So let's uh, just use black. And let's update the state spark color. So we can start to create our scroll view. We are just going to use this scroll view from React Native. And here, um, let's define a constant that will be the dots amount, uh, actually dots count. We are going to support three dots. So we are going to have three uh, screens in our scroll view. And here, cursor, because I mean, for this one, I'm using cursor. I'm not using VS Code. So uh, here it's not Copilot, it's cursor. It is uh, recommending me a nice suggestion about the, the views that we want to use. However, we want to support an horizontal scroll. There we go. And here by adding some margin, you can see that uh, we have definitely three different views, but we want to take all the available space. And in order to do that, we can just use the window width, uh, let's say the window width um, imported by use window dimension. So the hook from React Native and the window height. So let's say window height. And here, instead of uh, 100 and 100, we just want to take uh, the full window width and the full window height. And there we go. So we can remove the margin and we can keep the white background color, but we need to update the opacity. So the first page will have the opacity equal to zero. The second page will have the opacity equal to 0 0.1 and the third one will have the opacity equal to 0 0.2. We can very easily achieve that by just taking the index and multiplying the index by 0 0.1. And here you can see that everything is working perfectly. Last but not least, we want to support the snappy behavior. And to do that, we can simply use the deceleration rate equal to fast and the snap to interval property equal to window width. So here we don't need the snap to alignment. And actually you can see that everything is working perfectly. So that said, let's jump back at our demo. And you can see that we have already the scroll view behavior implemented and we can start to focus on our dots. So this component seems um, simple, seems obvious, uh, but it will actually require a bit of effort. And because of that, we are going to create a separate file in the components folder to build it. So that said, let's create the components folder. And here I'm going to create the dots 
folder. And within the dots folder, I'm going to create the index.tsx file. This is a cumbersome convention, but I really like it. Uh, of course, feel free to use whatever convention you want for the naming of uh, the files. So that said, let's create our dots component. We are just going to return a simple React Native view. And let's export the dots component. I also want to add the dots props. And we are going to support the count. Um, of course, we want to know how many dots we do want in the component. And that's what the count property is all about. And here, let's just take the count. And let's move this dot right there. So by using it, uh, nothing is changing. So that's pretty obvious. Uh, and that's because uh, the dots component is basically a simple React Native view. So let's add some styling. Let's say height equal to 100, width equal to 100. And let's add a background color equal to red just to see something. And here, probably it is covered by my face in the recording, but actually the square the dots component is right there at the very bottom of uh, the simulator. So let's just center it by using a view and by using the absolute positioning. So I'm going to place it at the very center of the screen. In a regular use case, you don't need to do that, of course. I'm just doing that for, let's say, for the sake of uh, the tutorial, because it will be easier to visualize it uh, right there than uh, uh, at the very bottom because of my lovely face. So that said, let's uh, try to add here the three dots. So here cursor is very, very helpful. And it is recommending me to create uh, an array of uh, zeros and uh, an array of three items because count is equal to three. And we have these very simple views. So width equal to 10, height equal to 10, for the radius equal to 50, that's too much. Five is uh, more than enough. It's basically 10 divided by two. And we need, of course, to fix the flex direction equal to row. So let's also get rid of the height and the width, and let's get rid of this uh, um, background color. So we want to add some sort of margin horizontal. Instead of adding the margin, let's add the gap property. And uh, I'm setting it equal to 10, which seems nice. So, so far, everything looks uh, nice. Let's see again the demo. And I guess, so I'm not sure, but I think that the dot size is uh, somehow correct. What we need to do right now is that we need to build the container UI logic. So how to do that? Um, actually, let me get back to this uh, UI. The point is that uh, it seems that the container is wrapping the dot. But the truth is that uh, under the hood, the container is uh, placed uh, behind the dots. So it is a component with an absolute positioning that uh, it is emulating the dot size with some sort of uh, fake padding. And it is uh, wrapping the dots from behind. This is pretty um, unclear, I know that. Uh, but let's see practically what I mean. So as mentioned, we are not going to wrap the dots with the container, but we are going to create an additional view behind the existing one. So let's add here a view with the style equal to, um, let's say, with equal to 100, height equal to 100, position absolute, and background color equal to red. So let's update this add index because we want to place it behind the dots. There we go. And instead of using this background color, let's use the active color. So the active color is the one defined in the constants, it's just the, this very simple green. So what do we want to do? Um, let's say the width and the height will highly depend on the dot size. So for, let's say for clarity purposes, let's create the dot size constant, which is going to be equal to 10. Let's replace here the dot size, dot size. And instead of saying width equal to 100, let's say dot size multiplied by three. So of course that's not enough. And that's because we also need to take into account the gap. So let's create the dots gap. Let's replace here the dots gap. And let's say that the width is going to be equal to the dot size multiplied by three. 
plus the dots gap. And here somehow you can see that uh, it is working, even though we want uh, to add some left padding and right padding. So instead of seeing dots gap multiplied by two, let's consider also the left padding, which is going to be dots gap, and the right padding, which is going to be dots gap again. So of course here we are just multiplying it by four, and that's identical. And let's add the left property in order to move everything on the left side by minus dots gap. So hopefully this makes sense to you. And about the height, we definitely need to fix the, the height. Instead of using dot size, let's say dot size multiplied by two. And let's move everything on top by dot size divided by two. So maybe here we can say something like uh, divided by three. Here I'm just running random values. So the idea is that we just want to have a container that it's big enough. So let's add also the border radius equal to dot size multiplied by two. And what I usually really like is that I love to add the border curve property equal to continuous, even though there is never a noticeable difference. So that said, let's jump back at our demo. And we can see that we are somehow close to the end result, but here the gap looks a bit higher. So let's increase the gap to 15. And I think it looks nice to me. So actually there is a, a very simple difference. Here we have a, a lower gap difference. So let's uh, reduce our left size. Instead of saying multiplied by four, let's say multiplied by three. And here let's say divided by two. And this should look uh, very similar to what we want. Let's say dots gap equal to 20. And hopefully this is going to be identical. So um, what do we have right there? We have the width, the maximum width, but of course we don't want to use just the maximum width. We want to parameterize the width by the active index. So the fact is that we are going to pass here as a property an active index. So here I'm starting to be scared about how reliable this um, cursor is. So let's say active index equal to zero for now, then we are going to pass the active index as a property. And let's try to parameterize this width. So what is going to happen is that the max width, max dots container width is equal to this value right there. So the one that we have defined here. So basically when the active index is going to be equal to zero, we just want to wrap the first dot. If it is going to be one, we want to wrap these two dots. If it is two, we just want to wrap these three dots. So how can we do that? Uh, this is fairly simple. Instead of, uh, actually, let's rewrite this formula right there. Let's get rid of this one. And instead of write three, let's replace the three with the count. And of course, nothing is changing since the count is equal to three. And let's consider when the active index is going to be two. So when the active index is going to be two, we just want to have the same identical width. So instead of count, let's just write uh, active index plus one. And here you can see that everything is identical. And that's what we are expecting because when the active index is going to be equal to two, we want to, um, we want to have the same identical width that we had previously with the count equal to three. So it is just active index plus one. And here let's consider that, uh, let's consider active index equal to zero active index equal to one and active index equal to, equal to two. And by magic, this formula is going to work perfectly also with the, the um, parameterized active index. So of course uh, we need to provide this active index from the dots property, but instead of doing that for now, uh, let's just focus on handling the animation part. And then of course we are going to pass the active index from outside. So what do we want to do? Uh, of course, we don't want to 
update this value with this uh, snappy effect, we want to have an effective animation. And to do that, of course, we need to update this view and convert this view into an animated view. So let's use animated by importing animated from reanimated. Let's uh, create the reanimated style. So I'm just going to write our container style by using the use animated style hook from reanimated. And here we are we are just going to return the width. So let's pass this reanimated container style over there. And there we go. And instead of uh, defining the width right there, let's just move it uh, in the in the style. This doesn't really matter for now, but it will later. And instead of uh, passing the width right, uh, let's say in this specific way, let's just wrap the width with the with timing high order function from reanimated. So let's reload. And here, if active index changes to one, you can see that by magic, we have this uh, great effect. So if you have a look at the original demo right there, and you look very closely, you can see that uh, somehow we have some sort of spring effect. This is barely noticeable, but it is there, believe me. So in order to support this behavior, we just need to replace the with timing high order function with the with spring from reanimated. And here, if we replace the active index with zero, one, two, you can see that we have the spring effect right there. So since previously it was barely noticeable, of course, uh, there were some additional configuration on this um, with spring high order function. And let's do them. So what I usually like to do is that I love to play with this mass parameter, uh, which by default, it is equal to one. In our specific case, let's just uh, say 0 0.6 and let's update the active index. And there we go. So it seems that it is working perfectly. So what do we need to do right now? Of course, uh, we cannot continue to update this value ourselves, but we need to pass this this value from outside. So how are we going to find this specific value? Of course, we need to find the, uh, we need to bind the proper scroll view offset. We need to convert the scroll view offset to the active index parameter. And then we have to pass this active index parameter to this uh, uh, component right there. So this sounds pretty abstract, but it's going to be hopefully very simple. So what do we need to do? First of all, the plan is that we need to find, we need to find the scroll offset. Once we have the scroll offset, we can find the active index. So in order to find the scroll offset, let's convert this uh, scroll view into an animated scroll view. So this is going to be extremely helpful because uh, with the animated scroll view, we have a very simple way of uh, finding the effective scroll offset. So let's uh, convert this scroll view into an animated scroll view. Then there is an amazing hook, which is called use scroll view offset from reanimated. And this hook uh, requires an animated ref. So what do we need to do? We need to define a scroll animated ref, which is going to be equal to use animated ref. And this hook use animated ref is defined by reanimated. So we need to import it from there. Then we can pass the scroll view, the scroll animated ref to our use scroll view hook. And of course we need to bind the reference to the scroll view. So let's say ref equal to scroll animated ref. And by magic, this we have this scroll offset. So let me actually reload. So if we try to scroll, we are not going to see the scroll offset. If we try to console log the scroll offset, the scroll offset won't change. But uh, actually, the scroll offset uh, is defined and it is updating itself correctly. The point is that the change is happening on the UI thread. And here we are, we cannot listen for the UI thread. So what do we need to do? We need somehow to convert, I mean, 
we don't need to do that, but for debug purposes, let's just use uh, some sort of use effect for the, uh, let's say for the UI thread, I'm just going to use the use the right value. And let's console log inside this hook. So this hook will help us to handle all the changes on the UI thread. And if we scroll, so here there is something wrong with my connection, but if we scroll, you can see that uh, we are able to access the scroll offset value properly. So what do we need to do right now? We need to convert the scroll offset value into the um, active index. So how can we achieve that? This is very simple. So the, the problem is that uh, the scroll offset will change and when it is fully snapped, you can see that we have this value, which is 430. When it is snapped again, it is going to be 8060. So the truth is that uh, we are just snapping by the window width. So if we want to get the active index, we just need to divide this scroll offset by window width. And here you can see that uh, we have properly the active index equal to zero, equal to two, equal to one. So here I just, uh, I'm just scrolling and you can see that everything is working perfectly. So instead of having the decimal values, of course the index will not uh, support decimal values. So we just need to apply some sort of uh, flooring operation. And you can see that it is working perfectly. So here we are just going to define here the active index and we are going to return the value that we have evaluated. So the use derived value is uh, going to be also very helpful because um, it works somehow like a use memo hook on the UI thread. So we are able to do some sort of computation and we are able to retrieve our active index. So here we have our active index, which is uh, a shared value of type number. And the idea is that we can finally take this active index and pass it to our dots. So let's say active index equal to active index. And of course here TypeScript is complaining and that's because we need to specify in the dots property, our active index um, prop. So as mentioned previously, the active index is not going to be a number. Um, it is going to be a shared value of type number because we are evaluating the active index with the use the right value prop, which is not just extremely helpful, but is also very convenient for performance purposes. So let's convert this active index into a shared value. And there we go. So if you're not familiar with this shared value concept, I highly recommend you to check out my playlist about reanimated on this channel. And you are probably going to add a lot of value and understand better how this concept works. So let's take this active index and instead of using this constant, let's take this one, let's say active index dot value and active index dot value. So let's reload. And somehow you can see that it is working perfectly. So let, let's be honest. If I scroll here, the animation is working properly, but it is very, very slow. And uh, in the opposite direction, instead, it is extremely fast. So that's because we are using mat floor. If we use mat round, the animation is going to be very fast in the, from the left to the right direction, but it is going to be, actually it is fine also in this specific way. So I was thinking about using some sort of uh, minus 0 0.5, but to be honest, actually minus, uh, 0 0.20. So here I'm just messing, no worries, forgot, forget what I said. Let's just round the values with mat.round. And there we go. So um, actually it seems that the animation is done, but there is one very small detail, which is not really a detail, it is an important concept. So if you look closely at these dots, uh, in this specific condition, the dots are white. But uh, when the, let's say, when the dot is not covered by the dots container, the dot is somehow white with an opacity applied to it. And we need to handle this behavior. So we need to animate the opacity of each dot uh, when the dot is not active. So how can we do that? 
So this is going to be very simple, even though it's going to be also a bit tricky. So first of all, let's remove, let's add a return here. And the point is that we are going to need to animate, uh, we are going to need to animate this view. So we cannot use a simple view, we need to use an animated view. And that's because we are going, so this is our dot and we want to animate the dot. So let's actually refactor border radius with dot size divided by two. And the idea is that here we can add some reanimated style. Let's say reanimated dot style. And we are going to break the hooks rule because we cannot place a hook inside a loop. But close your eyes and let's accept that for now. Uh, we are going to solve that later, but this will simply work. And for now, let's say, let's just pass this reanimated.style over there. So what do we want to do here? Let's just disable the react hook rule and let's handle the opacity. So the opacity is going to be one in the default use case, but uh, let's say is dot active. So we need to add somehow the property, we need to handle and to check when the dot is going to be active. The dot is going to be active when the index is going to be minus or equal to the active index dot value. So for instance, here it is active because the index is equal to zero and the active index is equal to zero. If the active index is going to be equal to one, both the first and the second dot are going to be active. So if the dot is active, the opacity is equal to one, otherwise it is equal to 0 0.5. Let's say maybe 0 0.2 or 0, 0 0.3 and that's fine. And here, if we scroll, you can see that everything is working perfectly, but the animation is too quick. So instead of uh, having just this condition, let's use the with timing hook, uh, the with timing high order function from reanimated. And here, you can see that everything is working perfectly. So maybe we can also increase a bit the speed. And there we go. So that's it. To be honest, uh, the animation is completed, but of course we need to fix, uh, we cannot just uh, ignore, I mean, we can, but uh, let's fix this, uh, this rule. So how to handle with this specific behavior? The point is that we need to convert uh, this uh, um, let's say this code into a proper component. So we need to move this code right there into a proper component. So how to do that? Let's just get back right there. Let's create, oops, let's create just the dot TSX. So here we just need to import everything back. And we need to define the dot props. So we need to specify that we want to handle the index, which is going to be equal of type number, the active index, which is going to be equal of shared value type number. Then we need to pass the dot size. And there we go. So let's add the properties. Let's replace dot side with size. And there we go. So let's just export this component. So here, as you can see, everything is identical to how it was previously, but the point is that we can use the hook because we are no longer into a four, into a map, a map. So here, let's just place our dot. Let's import the dot from the file. And let's remove this useless import and everything is working perfectly. So this was just, um, a very small refactor, but uh, it is the best way to, I mean, it is the best way to work, of course. And that's it. So I really hope that uh, this tutorial was clear and uh, let me know if you have uh, any additional suggestion for the upcoming content. And that's it. So thanks a lot for staying with me all this time and hope to see you to the next one.